allegiance. And we're gonna say the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask for a moment of silence for all those who serve our country and our citizens in harm's way our police force, our military. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a seat. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go ahead and call the call the program to order here. So we are uh, we apologize for the delay. We had an emergency um, executive session for a personnel matter, and um, this is a hybrid be uh, board meeting. The Zoom public will be muted when they come in. And when the board is talking and if that require board vote, Zoom room will be given the second opportunity to comment and ask questions. And um, there will be a, the recording of this meeting will be available via Zoom uploaded later to the township's YouTube channel for viewing. Under the chairman's report, the township office will be closed on Monday, September the 5th in recognition of Labor Day. Friendly reminder that the township utilizes constant contact to keep residents up to date with non-emergency township information. Please go to the website and click the e-notification tab on the left-hand side of the homepage to sign up. The Futurist Committee is currently seeking new members. The ABC volunteer form can be found by clicking the forms and applications tab on the left-hand side of our homepage on the website. This evening, there are no hear public hearings. There are no emergency reports. Uh, there is no financial report. And so that moves us right along to the approval of the minutes and the treasurer's report. So we'll start with the minutes. I have no comments on the minutes. And uh, Chris, nice job. A lot of minutes there that you took and a lot of public comment you captured nicely. Thank you. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the minutes for Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, and Tuesday, July 5th, 2022, as presented. Second the motion. Thank you. Um, the, I saw only one correction. It was just, I think, a typo. Um, it's on the minutes of July the 19th, Chris. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't call you sooner on it. I, I meant to do that. Uh, page seven, line two. Um, Cody thanked Mark Miller for the cleanup of the bathrooms. Um, Michelle apologized to public work staff who have to clean up the vandalism. Just have instead of has. I didn't see any issues other than that small typo, which is amazing considering the volume of information you had to capture. Um, are there any other board uh, corrections or comments? No. Anybody in the room? or in our Zoom room? Did I have any questions regarding the minutes? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of passing the minutes into the record, aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Treasurer's report, July 14th through July the 28th. Dave, do you wanna take that? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the weeks, July 14th through the 28th, 2022, general fund revenue over this period was driven by earned income and uh, real estate tax receipts parks and recreation fees and building permit fees. Expenses for this period include engineering services, equipment rental, insurance premiums, cell tower, uh, school tax payment, and ongoing operating expenses. Uh, our capital reserve fund incurred expenses of $90,000 for Hershey's Mill Dam construction. And as a point of interest, um, Chris Boylan put together and uh, mailed an information letter for delinquent sewer and trash collections. Um, to customers notifying them of our, of our new collections process with uh, Portnoff Law Associates, uh, allowing them an avenue to pay their bills prior to being sent to collections. That action, as well as having uh, Portnoff as our partner, <clears throat> as a receivables resource has facilitated, and this is as of Thursday, $21,751.66 collected out of the $144,000. $428.34 sent to Portnoff, which is a 15% collection rate. 
Uh, I think that's up to 18% now. Um, wow. And we've also signed up, we're up to 18, another 18 people who have given us voided checks to have an automatic deduction Great. taken. Great. So Great. this is this has worked wonders so far, and I yeah. think it's just going to continue. Terrific. Uh, questions about any of the bills? I had none on. I the, didn't see any questions the on the bills. Yeah. Okay. Can I get ask a question, Dave? Yeah. Um, on the um, monthly debt pay down breakout single sheet. Um, Clarify for me um, the 2017 general fund, um, no payment, uh, original loan amount 5.3 million um, and remaining principal 5.29 million. Have we only spent $20,000 here? No, the, the, um, the bond is front loaded. So we're basically just paying interest. There's very little principal that's been paid. I think it was five thousand a year. Well, it's it says no interest or principal payment. This is just for the current year. Okay, so we pay it once. Yeah, this one is paid uh, a principal payment once a year. Why haven't we uh, used more of that money? I, I don't understand that. The money has actually been used. That doesn't have to do with the actual loan amount or the remaining principal. I see. Okay. So we've used it um, and we paid down $20,000 of principal. Um, what do we have left? Do you, does it say here? Uh, it doesn't say on this. I usually do it on my capitals uh, improvement and projects worksheets, which uh, I will have at the next meeting. But okay. that'll, that'll have a breakdown of how much we've spent um, as of whatever point in time, say next meeting, and then also uh, which projects it's spent to and where it's earmarked for. Okay, thank you. Sure. Perfect. Just one other thank one too. Um, Dave, I, maybe I'm remiss. I, under the sewer fund in, in our uh, debt schedule at the moment, um, I thought we had uh, outstanding debt uh, of about 10 million or more. Was something paid off? I see it's about 8.6 now, and I thought it was more around 10. Maybe I just, um, you know, uh, had the numbers wrong. We obviously haven't paid off a anything particular, but that may, may have just been my math earlier. I I, um, I I just thought we we had about ten million in debt in the sewer fund. Clearly, we don't uh, from what you have here. But I maybe uh, I thought well maybe there was um, one of the uh, notes was paid off and I just missed it. But, uh, yeah, but, the remaining principal on this adds up almost to ten million. It's over oh, nine. Then, it's between nine and ten. So five, six, seven. I got 8.6 and I thought it was like 10. So maybe, I, I don't know. That's, it's not a hearing. It is what it is. I, I just, I thought I uh, I'll, I'll double check on that. Yeah. Madam chair, I'd like to make the motion that we accept the receipts and approve the expenditures as presented in the expenditure register and as summarized in the treasurer's report. Thank you. Second the motion. Second. Yep. Great. Thanks, John. All right. Are there any questions in the audience here regarding the bills or the expenditures? Are there any questions in the Zoom room regarding the bills or the expenditures? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of paying the bills? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I, 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 Cody, did you vote on that? Oh, you did. Thank you so much. All right. So moving along, uh, we're going to look under old business. We've got 9A. Consider the passage of resolution 20-22 excuse me, 2022-14, establishing members for the new Environmental Sustainability Advisory Council. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a follow-up resolution from the July 19th meeting, wherein the board passed Ordinance 129-D-2022, which established the Environmental Sustainability Advisory Council, but we did not pass the resolution that night to appoint the members. So again, this is a follow-up and, and goes coincides with that ordinance in order to establish the members for the newly created ESAC. And I will let our uh, solicitor add anything as he deems appropriate. No, that was that was a, a great introduction. Uh, as you'll note, Derek filled in the names uh, as based on the discussions he's had with the board. Right. It includes appointing a chair with staggered terms per the ordinance. Uh, so then once these terms are up, you will then have the opportunity to either reappoint or appoint new members. Great. 
Yeah, let me make a comment that uh, we had one open position. We had two really excellent candidates. Um, we chose to appoint one of those. Um, other townships have auxiliary or ancillary or um, other kind Older of volunteer yeah. non-voting uh, members of their committee. Um, so uh, we're going to, uh, we have information which we don't want to make public right now as to whom, but um, one of the members that we're going to appoint tonight will be rolling off of the committee at the end of the year. And um, the other very excellent candidate that we uh, interviewed um, we will more than likely um, consider her reconsider her application at that at that time and, and appoint her to the committee. Sure. I hope so. Yeah. Terrific. Um, and you you were right to say they were both candidates were exceptional. Yeah. Um, we're very fortunate in this township to have such exceptional um, residents who volunteer their efforts and time. Um, Madam Chair, I, I move we pass resolution 2022-14 establishing members of the newly formed Environmental Sustainability Advisory Council. Thank you. Mike. I'll second that. Thanks, Cody. Um, do we need to um, read any of this in particular into the record, Bill? Uh, no, the resolution was included in your agenda packet, so the public has the opportunity to review it first. Okay, and we don't have to go through each of the names individually? You do not even with the new person that's being appointed. Correct. The, okay, I, I presume their name is on the resolution she already. Is, yes, she's also. Here. Yes. So then right. if it's all on the resolution already, no need to read it. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments from uh, anybody here in the room regarding this passage of the resolution? Uh, are there any questions in our Zoom room? And seeing none, I'm going to call the question to order. Uh, those in favor of passing resolution 2022-14, establishing the, the members of the new Envi Environmental Sustainability Advisory Council. Aye. 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 And no against. Thank you very much. Derek, Bill, nice nice job. And that was, that was a pretty seamless, you know, yes. big transition in, in getting the yeah. uh, all the documentation and these uh, the ordinance and the resolution. That was place. definitely yeah. mostly Bill, so. And I, and take up I gotta track. say, Christy I was just gonna helped say, a lot as well. Christy, Christy is provided. Just, oh, very Christy. good. Yeah, yeah she's Christy, provided so much nice. information. Worked very smooth. Thank you, Christy. So under the next item here, we have ca uh, consider catch-all provision in the zoning ordinance. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is another follow-up issue. I think it was two meetings ago, might've been a little longer, but we had uh, talked about a catch-all provision in our zoning ordinance. And the reason for that is if, if something, uh, a legal use in Pennsylvania comes our way um, as an as a possible use, and we do not have a definition of it in our uh, code that this catch-all provision and, and essentially stating if anything else uh, is a legal use in the township and we don't, uh, we don't ha allow for it anywhere, then it would go in this specific zoning district. So we talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. and the board wanted us to come back with a recommendation, uh, a little bit more solid of a recommendation on where that would be. Bill and I have talked over the last several weeks. We think I-1 light industrial makes the most sense on something like that. And I attached a map in the packet. You can see it's sort of that little sliver above the, the business park, right above mm -hmm. Y and extending down to Wilson, up to Wilson Drive along the West Coast and East Coast border. Um, so that, that was where we thought it was most appropriate, particularly where you don't know, you're trying to talk about hypotheticals and what could possibly come down the plague. So. Um, this is where we thought made the most sense and was the most diverse. It's away from residential, mostly. Um, so I'll let Bill take over from here. Yeah, I, that, I, I agree, Derek. This also has uh, some vacant land in it as well. Um, some that's used for agriculture, some, some that's not fully developed, which is important if there's a use that were to come about. It's important to, that you have undeveloped land zoned to permit them. Uh, and it is important to note that this would be by conditional use only. So they would have to meet the objective criteria in your ordinance for a conditional use before mm -hmm. they could just put any of these uses um, that aren't already provided for in your ordinance in this zoning district. Mm -hmm. so, so the motion this evening is just to authorize the, this process to continue. You'll submit it to our planning commission as well as the county planning commission for review and comment. Uh, Derek, is that your the, uh, process uh, path? Yeah, it would have to go to both because Correct. it's a zoning. Yeah. Um, so it, it could 
it'll be over a month before it gets to the board. Yeah, again. I expect could be yeah. could be six weeks. Or yep. I mean, the county has forty five days, I guess. Um, uh, is it still forty five days? It's thirty. Oh, it's thirty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, Madam Chair, I'd make a motion we authorize the township solicitor and, and manager, township manager, to advertise these included uh, the included ordinance, which would amend the East Goshen zoning ordinance to permit the I one zoning district by conditional use, any lawful use not otherwise permitted in the township. I'll second that. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> maybe Derek, you can help me out with this. I'm trying to see where Route 3 is located. Okay, yeah, that's the one on the bottom. Three. Oh my oh, God. That's the C1, C4 corridor. C1, C4 down the bottom with purple is. Okay. This so is this um, Airport Road. Yeah, this is Airport side. Road here. And you're right, right up top. Right, 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 right. That's Airport Road, and this is Westchester Pike here. Okay. Um, so if um, an allowable use um, request were made in another area, would the person have to apply for variance then? If they are applying for a use that is not already permitted in that zoning district, yes, they would have to apply for a use variance. Okay. And who would who would approve that in the end? Or that would be up to the zoning hearing, zoning hearing board. So zoning hearing board would then listen to a, an argument or a hardship and determine if that use would be permitted in the area outside of the light industrial that you're referring to. Yes, that correct. is correct. And, so, and I will say, um, generally with catch-all provisions like this, uh, you don't want them in a necessarily prominent location in your municipality because uh, the, the types of uses that have used this are historically billboards, adult, shops, the, the stuff that you don't necessarily want in the front could of you your like, municipality. Could you define adult shop? It's in your ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have a definition. So, it's fairly um, lengthy. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, so that would be true for the most part. For but, the most part, right. But if there were something that came along in the business, in the business, in this business corridor, mm -hmm there would be a possibility at least for a zoning hearing board yeah. hearing. And that's Absolutely. true whether we pass this or not. Correct. Okay, that's, that's yep. fine. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and frankly, if there's a use that comes about, the board could also change the ordinance to allow that's it. That's, well. that's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that was my question because okay. was it, if a request comes through for a use that's not in a district, the delimiter there between it going to the zoning hearing board for variance versus coming to the board requesting a zoning change, change is uh, either works. Well, I mean, but the because uh, because clearly if it comes to the to the governing body, um, you know, it 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 starts and stops there. Uh, zoning hearing board, there's multiple potential procedures, uh, appeals, et cetera, and I'm just wondering, what, is there the the again the delimiter between someone coming and 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 uh, before the board for a new use and whether or not and how it gets pocketed either to the zoning hearing board or to the governing body I, I, yeah so so the way i've generally seen this occur is if if a property owner has a property in a zoning district and wants to do something that isn't permitted there the first stop is usually the board of supervisors because okay. it's easier and cheaper. If the board is willing to change the zoning ordinance, then they're done. Okay. Then they get it. If they're not, then they have to go to the zoning hearing board and put on a case and there might be opposition, there might be neighbors, there might be an appeal. So the board of supervisors is usually the first stop. Okay. Okay. That was, that was I something I want to try and get that out I, and have a little better understanding of, of this particular I think one. I understand that. What I, I'm not sure about is uh, the I-1 district that we're delineating now um, it, it, if I'm reading this correctly, it permits any lawful use not otherwise permitted in the township. Correct. Right. That's so the gist. you can come into I-1 and do anything you want? 
No. no. Uh, if your ordinance permits something somewhere, then they have to do it where it's permitted. So if your ordinance permits I a billboard I in see. the C4 district, they have to do it in the C4. They can't go under this catch-all provision. This is this a backup. Is just, yeah, this in is case a backup we don't have a use definition. In case you don't define a use and a court says, well, you need to allow it somewhere. Um, and you don't. Okay. Okay. I'm clear. Um, it's so just totally you know. legislated or court case law indicated for these uses that we might not otherwise include. It can't just kind of, kind of something crazy come out of the blue that doesn't have any case law to it or any legislative uh, backing. Potentially, uh, if they come out with a use, you could be the test case. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, yeah. If they come out with a, a use that you know, through the, the lawyer through. is laughing as he says that. <laughs> I don't want you to be a test case. Don't worry. Um, but if they come up with a use that they don't think is permitted anywhere else, we as the township, your consultants, your solicitor, your your manager, your zoning officer would look through and say, well, maybe that really fits in this other district, or maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, and they prove to us that it doesn't, then they would probably fall under this catch-all. Yeah, that's my question. If, if somebody came, let's just use the billboard and they, they didn't want to put a billboard in in uh, yeah. in I-1, they, we could have them do it someplace else. This is a catch-all just to say that we have this kind of legislatively and we're not hanging out there exactly. and have an issue, right? I mean, we, we really could, hope we never have to use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good, now, just, be, just, be, just to go back to the basic, the law says you have to allow every use somewhere. And so you run the risk of by defining uses by missing one. And so this makes it so that even if you miss one, you're still okay. We've got okay. a place to put it okay. without exactly. a, a curative amendment. Exactly. Very good. Um, are there any questions in the audience here in the room or on the Zoom room regarding this issue of zoning? Um, then I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of passing the motion to advertise the ordinance that would amend the zoning ordinance permit um, I-1 zoning district by conditional use. Any lawful use not otherwise permitted? Vote aye. 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 Anyone against? No, we're good. Okay. You know, All it's right. interesting because the, our planning commission, our planning commission, and the county planning commission, their comments could be you know, give us a different spin on things as far as That's true. what their view of, the, of our zoning districts are and, and the use. But um, usually the county doesn't go that strong at it. Lately they have. Well, have, have they? <laughs> um, but may, maybe Brian's changed the, the culture. I, I don't know, Brian. We're, but um, our planning commission, you know, I'll, I'll be interested to see what their, their take is yeah. on it. If, if they really, you know. If they really scrutinize um, it. Yeah, really bet it. Um, Moving on to new business, um, we would like to have Derek appoint, well, we'd like to have Derek talk about the appointment of a new zoning officer. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, Dave and I have been busy over the last two months uh, sure, doing, uh, we, we've had two open positions, full-time positions uh, at the township building. One of them is, was zoning officer, director of code enforcement. Uh, we did numerous interviews. We went through that process. And at the end of the day, we we decided that the best person for it was the internal person. So uh, Dwayne Brady came out on top. He is a current employee. He is a code inspector. He has numerous years experience with zoning and code inspection uh, throughout his tenure in, in Chester County and, and even beyond. So I he is on the uh, Zoom call, as you may see. So he is here to say hi if anybody has any questions. But uh, I said back in June when you appointed me, I didn't want to be zoning officer long. So I am, <laughs> I am uh, hoping you will appoint Dwayne and get rid of me tonight for the full-time zoning officer. Derek, we decided that we really do like you. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, I move, we move, remove Derek Davis from the position of interim zoning officer and appoint Dwayne Brady as the permanent full-time zoning officer. Thank you, John. I'll second that. Great. Um, I don't have any questions regarding this. I think it's a smart move. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions here in the room or in our Zoom room? Dwayne, do you have any comments to make? I would just like to say thank you very much and I look forward to growing in the township. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Dwayne.
All it would right. be great best to have of, you on best board. Best of luck and success with it, Dwayne. Thanks Let's for stepping up. Let's go ahead and up. call this question. Those in favor of, uh, of hiring Dwayne as our zoning officer, aye. 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 And no opposed. Dwayne, we really appreciate having you on board. Thank you for your work so far. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dwayne. All right. And then moving along, other new business. We have the library uh, folks here. Maggie, Stan, you want to come on up and give a presentation to us? Um, you will, if you don't mind coming over to the microphone, the people on the Zoom call can then hear you. It was a, it was a very nice uh, brief and summary here. So yes. we have a pretty good gist of things. We There's have a good pretty good idea. Yep. So you don't necessarily have to go through it line by line. No, I was just going to um, give kind of like more of a summary of it. So Perfect. Okay. That's okay. perfect. All right. So um, Malvern Library has been a part of the community for over 100 years. If I talk to you fast, please tell me. It's okay. <laughs> I tend to do that. Um, and we've gone from just housing books to now also including a plethora and variety of resources, programs, and services and technologies. Uh, some of the items that are available are computers for the public, access to, re to free Wi-Fi, and patrons can also check out hotspots for a fee. Our newest piece of technology is actually a 3D printer that we have for STEM programming. And I've actually brought a couple examples of what the children have printed. Um, oh as young as seven and as old as 13, if you guys wanted to take a look in. If you could just come a little closer to the oh, mic. Sorry. So it's okay. not that great of a mic. So sorry. I apologize. Uh, the children that participate in this program are between seven and 13 years old. And we're hoping to encourage them to pursue the sciences. We've also started a library of things, which includes board games and puzzles that can be checked out. And we have a museum pass for the Elmwood Park Zoo that can be checked out by our patrons. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, our children's library, we have a new one, and she's actually started a teen book club, a teen advisory council, and a summer teen volunteer programming, which has very, been very helpful for running our summer reading programs. For adult programs, virtually, we've done yoga, cooking demos, and also financial security. And when we can, we record those and put them up on our website so people can view them at their leisure if they couldn't make the live uh, streaming event. In person, we have a book club, a Gamblers Anonymous group that meets on Tuesdays at 7. And we now have a poetry circle and a poetry writing group that is actually run by the East Ocean Poet Laureate. Oh, very good. Yeah, so. Strong municipal funding makes this possible. And as you can see from the chart we provided, about 26% of our funding comes from the state and from the county. And we also raise ourselves every year through our give and our two annual outside book sale events, close to about $28,000, which in a normal year uh, represents about 10 to 12% of our revenue. Uh, so that brings us to our municipal funding, which actually represents typically about 41% of our funding. And that's combined between the four municipalities of Malvern, East White Lane, Willistown, and of course, East Ocean. So, this funding, um, I, you can see from the statistics, I provided what we received uh, in 2021, so everybody can tell what everybody provided for the library, and uh, also the usage rates by East Ocean, which when you look at just the service area cardholders, they represent 25%, and they also represent 24% of the checkouts that we receive. However, when you look at the per capita rates, uh, currently, East Goshen uh, provides the library with $1.22, and the other three provide over $3, with Willistown providing $4.14, I mean, sorry, $4.14, and Malvern, when you actually include their in-kind services charges, their per capita is $17.95. So, um, so basically, East Goshen is giving a third. We did approach East Goshen back in 2018 to increase the per capita, what at the time was a dollar for the $18,000. And we got it up to $1.25 to better represent East Goshen. However, with the 2020 census, that has actually decreased the per capita because East Goshen has grown and is now represented as $1.22 here. That's why that's there. So um, because these re um, usage rates have remained consistent, we thought it best to ask if uh, East Goshen respectfully would increase our funding from the rate of $22,500 to 24,853 for the 2023 budget. This might represent a 10% increase, but is only a 13 cent, uh, I'm sorry, 12 cent increase per capita. And um, thank you. Thanks, Maggie. Um, that explains all the numbers that I think we need. I don't have any questions for you. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Maggie? No. I, you know, I. Um, Colleagues, I, I don't I don't have a question for Maggie. I, I see the numbers here. I see the usage by East Goshen. And I'm going to ask my uh, fellow supervisors when we get to the budget 
uh, later on this year um, without uh, creating expectations. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if we can get $30,000 in the budget for this for next year. So I'm throwing that out there. I think it's something we should look at. Uh, don't, you know, um, my dad always said, if you have expectations, bring a parachute. But that's the way <laughs> I feel about it as I'm looking at it right now. Um, I think you're doing a great job. Um, I see what these other municipalities are contributing. Great for them. <clears throat> we can't begin to match that. But I, I think as a township, we, we hopefully can do a little better. We're, like every municipality, we'll have our budget challenges this coming year. But I'd like to ask my colleagues, at least we give that a, a look-see as a number that we might see if we can gravitate to later well, on when we do get into the trenches with it. Before we, st before, <clears throat> before we start even asking for Dave to find more money within our own budget, I think Dave had a couple of um, things to share. Uh, I just had um, wondered if, I did come across in the PSETS information that there is a uh, 2023 Keystone Grants for public library facilities. Did you guys investigate that yet? Yes, we are actually looking to redo our lighting in the building, and that grant is very specific for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So we can't just use it for um, regular operation costs or towards materials. It is a separate grant, and we are pursuing that. As we're looking to do some refreshes in the library, um, if you've been in there recently, uh, you'll notice that it's a little dated, a little worse for wear, and we are hoping to improve the aesthetics to help get more people inside and to also ensure health and safety by having furniture that provides more distancing and also to allow more flexibility with our limited space. Okay, yeah, good. I've not, I've just noticed that a lot of it was ADA upgrades, roof, replacement windows, energy efficiency, and HVAC systems, elevators, facility expansion. So depending on what you guys were looking at, I wasn't sure, yeah. but great. M Maggie, right? Yes. Maggie. Let, let me ask a question, and I think I've, uh, we've brought it up before. Um, I've been to the Malvern Library, I have, have a library card, been over there, and, and uh, uh, some family members uh, have been over there. Um, it shares space, it's tucked back, It. I don't think it's as visible, of course, once the community knows it, uh, but I don't think it's as visible as it, is it so I'd like to see it. Has, is there any long-term thought by the uh, the library board and professionals like yourself that are with the library about establishing somewhere down the road uh, your own individual library space, whether it would be conversion of an existing home and you know the way we've seen some other you know shops come into you know areas within the borough. Um, I'd really like to see the, the, the library stand on its own at some point in time. It, it, it's a big lift, but maybe it's in your long-term plans to establish a completely independent site. I will say that for me, that is definitely long-term, but um, that's kind of the end of the marathon. We want to start with the small steps to get us started. And that begins with the refresh that we're currently looking to do. And that also included a, an extension of our lease with Malvern Borough for 10 years with a renewal for another 10, because we are going to be investing into the building to try and make it again more flexible more versatile and provide better meeting spaces for the um our patrons of the facility but my dream is to yes one day have this be a stand at home stand alone library uh, maybe more central to the whole service area as well mm -hmm. okay thank you does anybody else have I, any other questions or i don't comments? see a, a motion here is this something no, we're this going is, to this is just something to consider just sharing that we bring it forward later yep. on to our budget for consideration. Okay. This is okay. Great. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming out, yeah, Maggie. Thank you, guys. Right, thank you. Thank and you. enjoy enjoy okay. the beat. Okay. She's very cute. Oh, thank you. There's a, so, there's a hand. It's mine. There's a hand raised here. Oh, okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't see the hand. Um, yeah. There a question on our Zoom room. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a question. It's also a statement. So, Madam Chairperson and members of the Board of Supervisors. I want to thank you for your ongoing support of the Malvern Library and your understanding of the need for increased funding. Uh, as a resident of East Goshen and president of the Chester County Library System Board, I'm fully aware of the varied services provided for our community and the importance of your municipal contributions to ensure that the needs of our neighbors are met. So I thank you again for your interest. I thank you for potentially being able to increase even through the commitment that Maggie has asked for. So thank you very thank much. You.
Thank you for your comments, ma'am. Thanks, Lauren. Christy, Thanks, Lauren. Uh, oh, ma'am, could you tell us? I, I can't tell her name. Can you tell us your name? Please? I'm sorry. It's Joanne Weinberger. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. I can't see that far either. Um, Christy, did you want to come up and make a comment? Come on up. It says Lauren. Joanne. No, Lauren's the other Oh, oh, that's what it is. It's, it's a, okay, I'm old, I'm a senior. She had a comment. Go ahead, Oh, Christy. I thought you were giving those to me. I was ready to give them to my grandkids, for goodness sakes. Oh, here, fine. <laughs> fine. We spent a lot of money on this. Yeah, we did spend, we spent some money. Christy, you said you had some comments. I just wanted to make um, a brief comment. Last year, when this appropriation came up, Michelle, uh, let the Malvern Library know that East Goshen had a poet laureate and that perhaps that person could participate in some way. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Everyone at the library could not possibly have been more supportive, more collaborative. They did a wonderful flyer to, we have now two programs for adults, a, a, a reading circle and a writing circle. And we have a whole host of ideas for children's programs, both at the at our East Goshen um, Park and at the library. So uh, we're already looking at grants to help with that. So I just wanna say they could not be more wonderful at this library. I knew that you were the perfect person for that, for that connection there, Christy. So thank Thanks, you very Christy. much, we appreciate it. So moving on then, to, and we will consider that as the budget season approaches, we'll be discussing that starting in September, just so you know. All right, thanks guys. Thanks. Um, when do you think we would be able to let uh, Maggie know when we have an idea of what her funding would be looking well, like? We so wait November, till we get the preliminary budget. Perhaps November. Well, pro yeah, yeah, November, I think once we actually yeah. settle in on a on preliminary budget. So not for a few months. Yeah, so it won't be for a little while, but We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, Thanks, so moving along, them. and we are regretfully accepting the resignation of Tom Clapter, Clapper from the vacancy board. Um, he um, and uh, the township auditor position. Um, 55 years of township service. Thank you, Tom. They are leaving the township. The Clappers are leaving. They're going to another community. And um, we need to find two separate people to fill the position of auditor and for the vacancy chair. Just, just to add, Madam Chair, so there's essentially one motion on the table for sure, and then possibly two other motions if you were to appoint anybody tonight. So there could be a total of three, there could be only one, but those are the, the motions outlined in the memo. Okay, so do we have to, so we need to make a motion to accept the resignation of Tom Clapper? Correct. From both positions, so... Um, so, so I'll, I'll make the motion that we accept the resignation of Tom Clapper from the position of elected township auditor and uh, the appointed vacancy board chair. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thanks. <laughs> Are there any questions regarding Tom's resignation here I, on the board? Any I, comments? I will miss Tom and, and his lovely wife. Um, I'm sorry they're moving. Um, thank you, Tom. Yeah. Are there any questions or comments in the room or in the Zoom room? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question to order to accept the resignation of Tom Clapper. Aye. 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 No opposed. And so that is an important position. Um, and <coughs> we do have to appoint the auditor as well. Um, do we have a, a name for... Um, the vacancy board chair position. Um, Jeff Crocker. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? I would love to. Um, that's the second one. Okay. Yes. Motion number two, Madam Chair. I make a motion. We appoint Chuck Proctor to the position of vacancy board chair. I'll second that. Thank you. And is there any discussion on the board? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know uh, in advance of the, <clears throat> the motion. I'm going to abstain <clears throat> for two reasons. Um, one is, um, of course, I've had an association with Chuck. We ran together uh, for supervisor some years ago. And number two, I, um, <clears throat> I believe that um, um, a fully independent vacancy board chair 
i.e. someone who's unaffiliated, so-called independent, would be the best choice rather than a particular party. So that's why I'm abstaining, just okay. so you know. That's fine. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, this is an appointed position. And as such, um, it's an important position to have. And I think that having a former supervisor in that role, someone who understands the the tasks that are required of a supervisor is, I think, a, in a position, a better position to assess um, a potential replacement supervisor in the event someone were to vacate their their uh, position. Yeah. So, um, are there any questions regarding this appointment here in the room or on our Zoom room? Madam Chair, could you just hold on one second, please? Absolutely. I'm just confirming. Um, Mr. Proctor is a member of your zoning hearing board as an alternate He's member. He's an alternate member. I'm not sure that they're compatible. I'm checking okay. that right now. He may have to choose one. Okay. So if you could just hold on one second. Sure. Unless that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just once so we're just waiting on bill to yeah, confirm there are a couple places i just need to check sure do you want to move on to the next one while I look at this? Oh, no. Do you guys? Okay. Um, I think that I think that um, we're going to move forward. Um, I think that we will probably table the auditor position appointment for the time being, if that's okay. There's no rush on it because the auditor doesn't do anything really the well, beginning of the new year anything? beginning of the new year actually there there is a legal oh, the, rush on it oh there yes. oh the so, time the time frame yeah so you have 45 days to accept right. the resignation which you just did you just did so from here you have 30 days to appoint an auditor so it would have to be at your august 16th meeting unless you would want to meet on the fifth week just for that so and I'm, if we don't appoint within 30 days then there's a court yes correct uh, correct Yes. So, uh, is that going to be a problem? Do you think we should be able to fill this within within the next two weeks? I'm, I'm, I don't do anything, right? Uh, I think there's actually legislation that proposed in the state right now to eliminate the position of auditor, uh, where where we have engaged uh, you know qualified right. outside uh, third party auditors and right. and. Uh, um, you know, frankly, the auditors in East Goshen, the reason somebody could do both jobs was, uh, you know, there's an apparent conflict of interest. I'm not comfortable having the auditor be on any other committee. Um, so I, we need somebody other than exactly than, um, Chuck, if we approve him tonight. Of course. Of course. Um, but, uh, you know, the position is uh, you know, hopefully the vacancy board never has to do anything. Hopefully, hopefully the auditor never has to do anything. So, so let's let's uh, table the auditor and, and uh, vote on the vacancy board. I, I will tell you the auditor is not allowed to hold any elected or appointed office. Right. So yeah. that was interesting. Yeah. Even though he does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So Madam Chair, I'm not well, seeing a prohibition here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if 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 there is, if you find something in case law. Um, then we can approach Mr. Proctor and ask him to make a decision as to which position he would prefer. Correct. Then, then I see no reason why not to uh, call the question. Are there any questions regarding this uh, appointment here in the room or on the Zoom room? Then we will go ahead and make uh, the we'll we'll vote then uh, on appointing Chuck Proctor as vacancy board chair. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I'll, one abstention. And I'll follow up with Derek tomorrow Perfect. morning to confirm. If there are any questions, and, we'll, right. and then we must put this on for the August 16th meeting. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Yep. Oh my goodness. So consider the purchase of a new folding pressure sealer machine for utility bills. I think that's a that's an important thing. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. So this is run its course. Um, instead of taking ten years, it took about eight years, but we have it fully um, put away in the capital reserve fund, fully funded. Um, once we purchase this, if you'll allow us to have the up to five thousand dollars to spend, we've got three separate quotes. Rockwell right now is the cheapest, and it comes with a one-year guarantee uh, warranty. So by doing this, it'll allow us to keep it in-house for the billing process um, and save about three thousand a year versus outsourcing it. Okay, I would be willing to entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we authorize the purchase of a new folding pressure sealing machine from Rothwell with the initial order not to exceed $5,000 plus shipping paid from capital reserve. I further authorize the current folding uh, pressure uh, sealing machine uh, be posted for sale on Unicy bid and recycle if no buyer shows interest. Second the motion. Oh, uh, I think Dave, Mike, 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 Mike got, Mike got that, that one. I think Mike won. Yeah, um, Jeopardy. So are there any questions regarding yeah, okay. this purchase here on the board or in the room or in our Zoom room? Seeing none, let's call the question to order, uh, to, to call the question. Those aye. in favor of, of purchasing this new piece of equipment, aye. 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 And no post. Uh, standing issues. Derek, do you want to give us? Sure, uh, Hershey's Mill Dam project uh, continuing to get very, very close. We actually <laughs> had a couple of email exchanges the last few days about uh, punch list items. So uh, Mark Miller and I are gonna go out there fairly soon and uh, kind of walk through it and see what the punch list items are. So I would say by the end of this month, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping as far as a end date. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so that is, is coming right along. I, uh, I want to say it's, it's interesting to note that, that um, Grasses are already growing up over the, well, yeah, over the decade. Mm -hmm. That in of itself could be an issue, but I'll, you know, I'm just saying, just saying it. it's starting to you know that disappear. That it's starting oh. to meld um, into the landscape. And the landscape <laughs> yeah. is starting oh, to meld over it. Oh, Mike. Derek, um, assuming we're done in a month with it, um, are we going to have some kind of ribbon cutting opening ceremony? Yeah, I think um, I brought that up a couple of meetings ago. Tap a keg. Um, Oh, I would, Obviously, I'll definitely yoga be session. Yeah, I'll be nice yoga late afternoon. Uh, if yoga you want, session. I can circulate an email saying what, what dates would work for the okay. board. Perfect. That, that, yeah. would, that sounds great. Trend. That would be one. Okay. It's a, it's a good good news thing. And yeah, then the Milltown Dam project. So uh, the Milltown Dam project. I um I reached out to Kirk again uh -huh. on Thursday, and I did receive the communication back. He said that he was it's getting close, getting really close. He must be just like, shuffling his papers around. So, somebody yeah. at our last meeting <laughs> took credit for He's moving it along. He was like moving. in his hand. Yeah, yeah. There it was. It's, it's right, right here. It's over here. It's back and forth. Poised oh, above the paper. He's probably going to watch it this. Felt like, <laughs> it felt like his hand was poised above the paper. So we are so very close to getting this permit. Yeah. Um, but they've had a number of other deadlines that have... Um, have taken their time away from signing these permits. Yeah, signing um, takes a long time. Yeah. <laughs> to write your name. You, you know what it reminds it me of? Pick little can, little can. jocularity. I don't know whether you've ever seen the Spread cartoon country. movie uh, Zootopia, yeah. uh, but there's yes. a scene at the motor vehicles department. Of course, they're all animals and it's all animated and they get into the the fox and whoever else, the rabbit or whatever, they get into the motor vehicle bureau because they've got to get this license or whatever very quickly. And all of the uh, attendants, all the clerks are sloths. <laughs> so they go, why? <sighs> Yes. How may we oh, help oh, you? Oh. And I don't know whether you know. I, I don't. I don't know what's taking I, so long. I'm, I mean, it's just it's so frustrating. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually call tomorrow. <laughs> I, I had work yesterday and today. I was not able to physically pick up the phone to call them during business hours. So I will call them tomorrow. I do have some time to do that in the morning. So if you're here for the Milltown Dam project, you can absolutely come out, come up and make a comment if you'd like. We are so close. 
But please come to the microphone. Thank you very and much. And you know, Michelle, if we you need your have, name and address, if for you the have record, that number, I I'll do. call them as well. Okay. I just to piggyback. I'll, sh and I'll just share to, that with you. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't mistake our jocularity here for it's our seriousness about how frustrated it's we such are. A frustration. We're, we're, we're frustrated. We're frustrated at anybody. It's very frustrating for us because, I, and and I we reached out to our legislators. Um, David reached out to Carolyn Kamita. I reached out to Diane Heron. Um, I went through another state representative to try to see if maybe he had a different person to approach. Yeah, yeah. And yes, that's right. We went through Senator John King. And we were told that this was imminent, imminent. back in April. On the desk. On the in desk. April. And in fact, um, I talked to the person whose desk it resides on. So the more frustrating thing about this, not to um, belabor this and, and cut you off here, but the, so the more frustrating thing about this is we can't just get the permit and they go out to bid because of the grants and the grant process yes. that we've gone through. We then need to give it to the grant agencies to review with the permit in hand before we go out to bid with the bid documents. So that's another few months. So, so it's at step. least another couple of months. Yeah. So, so that's please. that's more that's more frustrating for me than anything is yeah. that we can't go right out to bid. I know. And so please give us your name and address, please. My for name the record. is Ron McGill. I'm actually here to talk about the Hershey Mill Dam project. Very good. Okay. So I live at 1050, 1050 Hershey Mill. Road. My house is the original Hershey Mill farmhouse. I'm directly okay. across. You're the guy the that project. fixed it up. I, no, no, that's so the I'm mill house. The, I'm He's on the other the side. Mill. I'm in the old, the old farmhouse. House. And okay. yes, I've been there for 30 years and we did fix it up. <laughs> um, ours was also in worse shape than the mill was when the whole area young couple great now. So I have a favorite neighbor now. He's spent well over a million dollars renovating that place. And um, so I had a few observations I'd like to share with you regarding the current status of the project. And I know that um, I'm very proud of you guys for taking over the township and giving back the Hicks farm and do, doing away with some of the evils that the previous administration had, uh, had laid upon us. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna lay any blame on anything, but I've got some observations that I think we can okay. still make improvements. What evils were those, by the way? Lots of evils. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Hershey Mill Dam boondoggle is evidence alone. Hershey Mill Dam boondoggle. Um, okay. So, this is, this is a good so let's just say uh, I'm a fiscal conservative. And, Me too. Uh, and I've been in front of this board many times over the last 30 years regarding that dam project with an N. Um, so um, we've offered lots of solutions over the years that we could have avoided this multi-million dollar expense and put a second spillway in. And there were, I even brought photoshopped drawings of options that we had, had come up with on our own back in 2004. So anyway, I'm not gonna beat that dead horse, but he, here we are today and we're looking at, um, a plan that got changed quite a bit mm -hmm. from the original plan that we as township uh, participants and taxpayers approved. So what happened behind closed doors with a, a bunch of meetings was they went from that original plan, which I'm sure you've all seen on the township docket to this current one. Um, and so I've got like six bullet points. I was gonna type this up to you you guys, but I'll just run through them real fast. Um, so there were design changes that caused um, the, you know, things to evolve. Um, the trails went away, the parking lot moved closer to us from the original uh, plan. I'm pretty happy that it's only three uh, parking spaces, but you know, the, uh, the original approved plan would have been much more desirable because we wouldn't see it from our property or the mill property. We can't change that at this point, but what we could change, uh, one of the other complaints there is that they brought in all the brown natural stones to build some of it and the scattered rocks around the place. And then they brought in gray foundation stone which or even our township guys, Mark Miller did a great job for Drew and his property in reshaping the stream, but they used foundation stone and nobody, I mean, commercial real estate as well. I mean, no one would leave that look anywhere, you know, not in a commercial setting, not a residential setting, and surely not foundation stone from the bottom of the earth 
it, you know, in this case around a, a park that was, if you go back to the original pitch, um, there were drawings made and, and um, you know, illustrations that showed this beautiful park and walking stones and things like that. It is not what we have today. Um, so we were, I had talked to Rick Smith many times about that when we first saw those stones getting dropped off, but nothing ever changed with that. Um, I still think we could do something for Drew and his property because it looks, in my opinion, terrible. Um, but uh, so that's enough about that. Um, the boardwalk, right? Um, the definition of boardwalk is boards you walk on, right? Not a battleship. So I understand for Mark Miller that we got fed funds for that. So it had to be handicap capable and that sort of thing. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, and you'll find from the neighbors that have stopped by already, and I see people every night because we're over there. Um, no one likes the look of this thing. It is the joke of the township that it's called the battleship now, and um, it really looks terrible. Um, so I think it would be possible, this is constructive criticism, it would be possible to do away with the down ramp to the other lower sections if they brought back some of the soil that they took away, they hauled a hundred triaxles or more of dirt away from that site. And we could get rid of that section that has the high railing by putting soil back and paving it, which was like the original design. And it would still be handicap capable and we could get rid of the railings. And again, I'm a fiscal conservative. I don't really wanna see the township spend any money, but it really looks bad in my opinion, and everyone who stopped by over the last couple of weeks since they put that railing up is just shocked at how awful it looks. Um, so uh, that's my solution to that. You know, it, it could be done. It could satisfy all the needs of the Fed, the grant, everything about it, but it's a process. So it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but I'd like you all to think about that. Um, I overheard so I had a conversation with Mark Miller recently. Um, there is a pond now in the center of it. Mm -hmm. um, the water level's too low. Mm -hmm. Mark's aware of this. Um, mm -hmm. The solution that we discussed was getting clay and reinforcing the spillway on the other side. And I know he spoke with the contractor about potentially lowering the weir that enters water in. Um, so hopefully they can do something about that, and that should be on your punch list that they should right. they should create heavier water flow because it it is currently a way bigger mosquito breeding ground than we have ever experienced in our thirty years of being there. Um, so that's that's that. Um, the uh, catch pond, and this is very important for you guys and the liability of the township. The lower catch pond that is right where the dam used to be. And again, this is an observation on my, my part and constructive criticism and a, and a suggestion. Uh, the catch pond was built for Drew and Dana, which is great. It routes some of the water through the secondary spillway that they have uh, a little access way that helps feed water to the third culvert, which is also important. But there's a big problem with the design. The water now, is up against, right up against the, what should be the foundation of the original loose stone wall that was part of the original dam. And it is already undermining the support structure of that loose stone wall. It will collapse. So I, I mentioned this to a couple of guys that were working on the site. They came back and they put a couple of rocks up against it. But I know from building that if you're going to, like in an old house like mine, if you want to build next to it, you take the original foundation wall that doesn't have a footer and you come out three feet from it and then you taper down at a 45 degree angle and that's your build angle. So either we need to pour a footing under this thing, which would be really prohibitive, or we need to bring soil and rocks out five or six feet away. You talked to that. Mark about this. Um, you, you, I had a brief discussion with Mark okay. about it. Um, okay. So I, that's my suggestion. Um, I have an engineering background, <laughs> but I'm not a civil, it's not my thing. 
it's just I've been through this and and <laughs> well thanks look none of you guys caused any of this I'm just trying to bring these things up so that we you know that they can get addressed before you make that final payment to the contractor as well um, so so that's constructive criticism about that I I'm convinced that that wall will collapse over the next few years from that water being right up against the uh, the, the fact that there is no foundation to it um, all right so that's that's that um, Here's another important thing. I think the township should address this. It has to do with all of us. Um, if we go back 25 years, the original premise of this whole dam destruction process, which you, I don't know how many of you are aware of how it all happened, and I won't beat the dead horse on that today, but suffice to say that some people came to the township and claimed that there was a 14 foot wall of water that could, in a collapse, could take traffic off Green Hill Road. That was their sales pitch on destroying the dam. Um, the truth is there's X amount of water. Let's not, we all know there are numbers for it. I don't know exactly what the number is, but in a hundred year flow storm, there's a certain amount of water that came over the dam and it exceeded the spillway. So we could have either lowered the spillway a couple of feet and achieved that square footage for flow, or we could have had a secondary spillway. Again, I'm not here to beat that dead horse, but I have been bringing up this next point for over 20 years at township meetings. And this is the point. The bottom line is that the three culverts under Green Hill Road cannot flow the 100 year storm. They can't even flow the 50 year storm or the 20 year storm. So I've asked or challenged in many times <laughs> in different contentious meetings, who has contacted PennDOT to arrange for that fourth culvert or a bridge to be put there? And it always was, pointing fingers and saying, it's not our problem, it's a PennDOT road. Uh, Ken Cavanaugh is our local PennDOT representative. I've spoken to him. Uh, I've dealt with him on some other projects for some other properties that I own. And um, no one has ever contacted him from the township. And, and there are some buttons to push where you guys could apply for that to happen. And, and we need that to happen because we actually lost the detention basin that was the pond. So we've actually now caused even more pressure to happen on Green Hill Road. And we've made the 1034 Hershey Mill, the Hershey Mill Mill property, uh, the de facto detention basin. So uh, we've actually caused damage to that property and it will continue to add damage to that property because of the increased water flow and detention basin effect, unless we get those culverts increased under Green Hill Road. So Drew and Dana are not here tonight, they're out of town, um, but I've had lot, lots of discussions with them about this and they're sort of like, oh, you know, they're, they're not experienced at this sort of thing. Right. Um, frankly, neither am I, but I know it needs to happen. And I, I know as evidence for the damage to that property that has caused and, and been caused by the township, and I'm a taxpayer thinking here fiscally that we are gonna be responsible, um, that property is suffering damage even now. And here's the evidence. I've been there 30 years, I've seen seven or eight times where the water has overflowed Green Hill mm -hmm. Road, mm -hmm. three or four inches deep. Um, I have never once witnessed that courtyard of that cute little garage area to get any water at all. And this year, twice it was a foot deep. So part of what happened there is all the construction and now the soil elevated the ground on the other side of the stream, which has eliminated the stream. It used to flow across Green Hill all the way up to the entrance to Hershey Mill, but very thin. Now that cross flow is gonna be four or six inches deep from their uh, archway mm. up to um, you know, the pumping station. So this is a permanent damage scenario <clears throat> that the township's gonna be on the hook for for that property. Just an observation, I don't live there, but I think that the way to deal with it is to get another culvert put in. 
and get increased water flow. Well, out that's it's interesting. Do you know how deep the pond was? It was only 18 inches deep. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So it was not going to wash. It was not going to be. Well, I, I made that argument back in 2005 or well, so. Uh, my husband made that argument back in 2011. <laughs> and he was the one who said, let's see how deep it is. And it was and the reason they, they pulled so much dirt out was it was all that silt right. and debris that was that sure. was in the pond. I was begging for so, that soil. Really <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the, the culvert is concerned, that's, that is a concern. And if you note, um, there are uh, across the street from, from, the, from the little garage right. and right near, uh, right, actually right at the, the little bridge that goes over uh, the Green Hill Road, it's not a bridge, but it, right. the road goes over the culvert. And right there, um, a year ago, a year and a half ago, a year ago, the road actually started to buckle, buckle yeah. and fall in on itself. <laughs> and, and I've been, I personally called PennDOT and I called Diane Hearn's office. And I talked to Diane, I, I sent pictures to her to show her the damage that was done there. So I have actually reached out um, so I think it's something that maybe Mark Miller and I can talk about a little bit. Maybe he can, maybe he can go out and evaluate the situation. Maybe we he's can aware of it. Call PennDOT and maybe. Uh, I will say you can. We, road. Yeah, there's, there's nothing that will prevent us from contacting PennDOT and <laughs> seeing what they can do or seeing their thoughts on the matter. I will say. And I don't mean this in a disrespectful way to what just was said. I think it's an oversimplification to say that we can pull levers with PennDOT that we haven't already. We can barely get PennDOT to cut grass in this township. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not exaggerating on you. Well, oh, I mean, I we know. do it. So adding a culvert or enhancing a culvert, maybe they'll say yes. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Right. So that's well, just my two cents. But Mark would know better than yeah, I would. Well, Ken told me that there's a process that has to go through. But of course. One of the impetuses that could cause that process to start on their half or on their behalf is if, and I don't have a copy of that study, but Gannett Fleming certainly does have that study that says X amount of water needs to flow over this dam. That is X amount of water needs to flow under that road. And if you present them with that, they have to do something about it. Right. So, uh, you'd think they should. No one has be, ever presented them with that. But so. maybe, we, maybe we need to to talk about having a plan to to do to do that to present that to them. Sure. Um, all the other points that you've made, we have heard what you've said. I'm more concerned right now initially about the mosquitoes. <laughs> right. So maybe we could ask uh, Mark to grab some dis mos mosquito dunks and sink them in the in that pond, what do you think? Well, I think once the pond has good water flow, it won't be quite as bad. Okay. Um, Mosquitoes don't blend in moving, in moving water. water. Right. Um, so there's still the problem. There's another problem. You know, again, design flaw. They've left wetlands and, and actually a swamp area on the far corner against um, drawing a blank on his name right now, but the next property up Green Hill, whose pool flooded, and you guys are probably all aware of his pool flooding from back before the dam was taken down. Um, hmm. That area, I pointed out to the contractors repeatedly that hey, if you shape that so it drains into the into the the uh, stream bed, it won't <clears> catch water. <throat> over there. And they're like, oh no, that's the design, and it's supposed to be wetlands and if we drain it it won't be wetlands anymore so anyway that's that's a another discussion okay i got, I got two more points and then I'll, I'll i'll vacate the position if i if i may and i appreciate your patience and, and all of this um so uh there's one other problem that is going to be a problem um as they drained the pond and now built the parking lot um you're probably all aware that there was like a surprise underground spring there, mm -hmm. which I think would be great if money was free, we should build a spring house. Um, by the way, any of you that have been here long enough mm -hmm. would know there used to be a spring house on my property across mm -hmm. from the stop sign, mm -hmm. but Hershey Mill Midnight Maraudered it out <laughs> <clears throat> back about 25 years ago. Um, anyway, so here, here's where this does relate to me and, um, and 
and uh, the neighbors at 1020 Hershey Mill Road. Um, because of that spring now <coughs> letting water pressure out, the hydrostatic pressure that was there from the pond used to keep that aquifer flowing on my house and would have gone to that other non-existent spring house. Um, that's all dried up now. Um, Peggy up the street said they've already had to redrill their well. Their well ran dry last year okay. when this construction started. And we have a well as well on our property and it's not flowing very well right now. So we are definitely seeing a reduction of water capacity at our sites because of that hydrostatic pressure not having an equal pressure from the pond anymore. Um, I haven't had to redrill, redrill my well yet, but if we do, I might show up at a meeting sometime and ask for some contribution there. Um, but, uh, and I don't know if the people at 1020 have already approached you for that or not. Anyway, so that's pretty much the end of my, uh, my rant here, and I appreciate your patience. Um, you know, I guess the, the bullet points again, I would love to see that railing go away. Um, if there's some way to do it over time, it would be a wonderful thing. Um, I think we need to work on the silt support wall scenario for, uh, for the uh, mill property. Uh, I'd love to see some walking trails come back into the design plan, but I don't know if that's that's gonna not going to happen, unfortunately. Um, so uh, adding the culvert to Green Hill Road, and uh, if we can come up with some way um, to cover up that ugly gray stone, you know? Okay. I mean, that, that shouldn't be too expensive. They either lace it with some soil, wrap it some some kind of growth. Um, okay. But it, it's... All right. Well, your your comments anyway, are appreciated, so. um, and, and, and we'll take into consideration things that we might be able yeah. to remediate um, and um, have discussions with Mark and the, and right. the contractor. And Mark knows how to get a hold of me. I'm, I'm always Great, available you. and, you know, I'm usually a guy with constructive ideas. Great. Um, well, so. thank you for coming and sharing them with us. We appreciate well, thank it. you for having me. <laughs> and all again, right. I'm proud of all you guys for uh, taking over the township and bringing some common sense back to the world. We're, we're, tr we're trying to <laughs> trying to do things as conservatively as possible. I that's for sure. That. <laughs> Thank you. I have one question. Why do the walking trails go away? And why can't they come back? Because otherwise the park is just like a walkway in the middle. Of let me let me hit that a little bit. Um, I'm relatively new uh, to the board, but I've followed this a long time. Uh, one of the things I think you were misled. Um, uh, the comment was made that um, uh, the design was approved originally by the neighbors. Um, the whole project was undertaken at the orders of the Army Corps of Engineers. They have jurisdiction throughout the United States over all water, uh, rivers, streams, lakes, uh, tributaries, wetlands. Uh, in fact, during the project, they declared the original parking lot, a wetland area, and that's why it was moved up. So um, much of what was done here was done because of those orders. We had a choice, the, the board had a choice at that time of either getting rid of the dam and letting the water flow as they're doing or repairing the whole dam. And the cost of repairing the dam uh, was at least as high as letting the, the water flow and taking the dam out entirely. So um, uh, this, this uh, project was not undertaken um, to beautify the neighborhood or anything like that. And I'm not trying to be a wise guy here, uh, which I am sometimes. Um, the project was undertaken because the Army Corps of Engineers said, yesterday the dam was okay, today it's not okay and you're gonna to have to do something. And it was something expensive. And by the way, they gave us no money. Um, and the only advice they gave us was to tell us what we had done wrong on the original plan, which included the, the walkway. They said, if the walkway was all boards, then the sun couldn't go through and water couldn't go through and it wouldn't be a natural environment. So that's why we had the walkway 
with the, uh, the extruded steel poles and everything, which is ridiculous, I agree. But, and I'm not saying anything you said is wrong because it's not. Well, they had some ideas on that too, but I, I am not totally. Well, I mean, there to are, that. there are walkways in the form of they, they put stones in certain ways. So people can walk, there's no prohibition from walking off the boardwalk. I think that's a port, important point, which was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I got in a pretty back and forth discussion and email and uh, the experts that we work with said, you can pretty much walk anywhere on the wetland. It's not prohibited. Um, so you don't, That's supposed to happen. That, well, mm. they they said that that would camouflage the steel, and you wouldn't notice it. I I don't know if it's going to well, work. Well, it, it's not just we that. That's know. the first to come up, but the whole landscape system is going to come up and and grow as well. As the steel is really. I went over with Mark Miller about three weeks ago, but I, I haven't been over since. Well, I'm I'm not that healthy, so <laughs> you may have to come out and, and call the fire department or something like that when I go over there. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not open. Well, it's no, it's it's not. Nobody should be walking on it anyway. It's, not yet. Well, it's correct. It's a work in process, progress, though. It's it's. Well, that's a good no. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. 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 So thank you very much again. I'm sorry sorry that we can't give you um, better information right now, but it's you you've given us food, some food for thought and and some things that perhaps we can. Yeah. Um. I'm going to move on then to any other matter. Uh, does anybody have any other matter? I do, Madam Chair. You do? Uh, <laughs> that discussion uh -oh. gave me an opportunity to do a little bit more digging, and I found the provision I was looking for. There is a prohibition on zoning hearing board members holding any other elected or appointed office in the township. So okay. you can leave the motion stand and allow Chuck to, to choose which one he would prefer. Uh, but either, or, or, And then at your next meeting, you would have to appoint someone to fill the vacancy created by that <laughs> or you okay. can appoint someone else as as vacancy chair this evening that's okay. up to you um i can we can we let the motion stand and then ask him his pro, his preference and accept his resignation from whichever one he would choose to re resign from that works okay all right that's fine um and under any other matter the only other question i've got is is there a chance since the Mary Del Pond has pretty much been um, completed, is there a chance that we can have a little bit of um, maybe a, maybe not a ribbon cutting, but a little bit of a, at least an acknowledgement that we've done everything that we're supposed to do there, um, have some supervisors go over perhaps and with, with some of the public works people and, and just, I can send out another, uh, in the same email what we were talking okay. about earlier with the ribbon cutting. Okay. Two different events. Two different events. Do you guys have any objection to that, do you think? Just to kind of say this is maybe invite some of the. You can take a day off from golf. <laughs> there's not, now, there's not a lot of room for people where she's going to dance, but it's possible for us to make it in special. Thank you. Thank you. Parking on that That'll be. A little bit a little bit more difficult. I agree with that. But the, the Mary Del Pine committee. Right. Just a really, really just text text. I, I think so too. I think that it would be nice if we just kind of capped that. So yeah, by the way, on the, on the projects, I want us to get an update on the bow tree. Uh, I mean, we've got it in the budget. Uh, I talked to Mark about that last week. Last oh, good. And Do you want to put your mic on? Sorry about that. Um, Bow yep, Bow Tree Pond number one. So Mark said he was going to, among other things, shift to a lot of different things after paving, which yeah. is starting right now. Yeah. The milling start next week. Um, mm -hmm. So it sounded like from him last week that's going to be a fall project. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. 
We also did, um, that was one of the <coughs> projects we put in for the state gaming grant, some money for that. So we might hear by the ball. Yeah. Okay, great. There are no liaison reports. Uh, there were no reports of interest or correspondence. Cody. Madam Chair, I'd like to make the motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second the motion. I second the motion. All right, those in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Thank you. Aye, aye, aye. All right. Aye, aye.